Welcome to Goldfish on Games, and after we had so much fun last time looking at all the various extras that developers left on the CD, just for our enjoyment, I decided to do it again, as I found a whole bunch more games that we can check out. So let's just dive straight in, shall we? First up we have Road Rash for Windows 95. It's not the same one that came out on the Amiga or the Mega Drive, but based on the one that came out for the 3DO. And they gave us a few cool extras on the CD, including desktop themes. Yep, desktop themes makes a comeback. And now that I have the plus pack installed, I can actually show these off properly. So let's take a look, shall we? The background comes from the game directly, but the pointers, these seem to have been made specifically for this theme. And they actually are quite nice. They really have put a bit of work into this. There's also a set of sound effects. This wouldn't be a theme that you'd use at work, that's for sure. Let's check out a few other sound effects. All in all, it's actually quite a good little pack. There's even a second theme, which has more artwork based on the game which, I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of this style, and a whole new set of icons and cursors. Themes wasn't the only thing they gave us on this CD, there was also a demo, because remember, you're meant to give the demo to your mates, not the full game. Don't copy that floppy. We can always rely on Blue Byte to put some cool extras on a CD, and this time it's Extreme Assault. No music videos this time, but they have polished things up a bit, as there's now a full website hosted on the CD to guide you through the whole experience. And when was the last time you saw a website with frames? Or one that said best viewed with Internet Explorer? That really does age it ever so slightly. And after looking at the nice little welcome page, it gives us an idea of what we can expect from the CD. Let's take a proper dive into it and see what we've got. This replaced the physical catalogue that they used to put in their boxes, and it gave them the opportunity to have some nice big banners with flashing text and GIFs to really punch home this game got a lot of awards. Wow, another sign that this is an old, old website. And one of the things they show you is Dr. Drago's Madcap Chase. I played the demo of this back in the day and loved it, but finding a nice box copy of it has proved to be quite difficult. Uh, back in the days when you clicked on an image and it took you to a separate page for it, rather than it being inline or as being a small pop-up. Ah, uh, you gotta love these old websites. There's also a demo for Archimedean Dynasty, which you have to actually find on the CD itself, but this page tells you where to go find it and how to install it. It wouldn't be a Blue Byte disc without some trailers, and seeing that we've already got a review video on Settlers 2, let's check out the video for Incubation. And with that explosive trailer complete, there's not much else on the CD apart from a few press releases. So let's move on to our next game. And that is Wing Commander The Kill Rathi Saga, which is the first three Wing Commander games all updated to run under Windows 95, which kicked off with a very snazzy CGI intro.
And seeing that the first CD only had Wing Commander 1 and 2 on it, they had lots of space for extra stuff, and one of the big things they filled it with was trailers for some of their other games. You know, I'm not really sure which platforms that game is coming out for, they really should have told us a bit more clearly. There's one more cool little extra, and that is a patch for Wing Commander 4 to give it the Windows 95 treatment, the same as Wing Commander 3. It's not often you see a patch for another game on a CD. And seeing we just watched a trailer for Syndicate Wars, let's see if there's anything extra on that CD. And while the answer is obviously yes, it is the silliest, smallest and yet largest extra so far, and that is the largest Prime known at that time. I have no idea why they put it on the disc, your guess is as good as mine. Let's take a look at our last game, Duke Nukem 3D Atomic Edition. To be honest, this CD alone could have made up an entire episode. Our first stop is Extras, which has a PDF manual and a defunct online gaming service. The aptly named Goodies folder is where we're going to find most of the fun stuff, starting with animations including the Duke Nukem logo and the team. Also included is a whole bunch of modding tools including the map editor Build. One common problem with Windows 95 was if you hit the Windows key many games wouldn't handle it very well and would tend to crash rather than restore so they included a tool to be able to disable that. Also handy to have is an FAQ for when you get stuck but one of the really nice things they had was the midis from every single level. When a game has a great soundtrack, it's always nice to be able to play it whenever you want. And not content with the video files, they also have a couple of pictures of the team. Just check out that handsome lot. SHIP IT! I've yelled that many a time myself. There's a whole bunch more modding tools on this CD. As the Duke Nukem team really did want you to mess around with the game and create your own content. But that wasn't enough for the Duke Nukem team, nope they had to add more, including a whole bunch of screensavers. Which wasn't exactly quick to get going, as first it had to unzip itself to then run the installer. This allowed you to select which screensavers you actually wanted to check out, which would then eventually install for real. It wasn't quick, but man, it was really worth it. Just check these out, they are so cool. Obviously not something you'd want to run at work, but then neither is Duke Nukem, so it probably balances out. Some of the screensavers were better than others. I'm not really sold on the Carnage Meter one, it seems to be very basic and just not really that fun. But there are many more. Such as these ones that like to destroy your desktop. I'll be back. That's a truly 
terrible Duke Nukem impression. I don't know who they got in to do that. LGR would do a better one. But it is a fun little screensaver to leave running. There are a few more for us to check out, including exploding stuff, where stuff explodes, including the classic toilet with matching water. Second to last is the image carousel, which has a bunch of images they took that they thought looked quite good. But if you didn't like them, you can actually select your own folder and show your own images, which is nice, I guess. And the last one is the shooting gallery, which in some ways is actually quite cool, but is not the fastest to load and to get running. Where Duke will shoot random enemies and items. I think a shotgun on beer bottles is a little overkill. And there we have it, all the screensavers that they included. They were really quite nice. But we've not come to the end yet. We've got more Windows themes. That's right, you can have Duke Nukem on your desktop. Again, we have two different themes with custom backgrounds and custom pointers. Who didn't want to interact with their computer using a gun or have a spinning klaxon as your waiting icon? The meat of this has to be the sound effects, as who didn't want Duke Nukem commenting on everything you do on your desktop? What? This pisses me off. Aha! Uh -huh. Huh? Get that crap out of here. Oops. Get back to work, you slacker. Yo. Cool. Time to kick some ass. Oops, this sucks. The second theme had a different background and an entirely new set of cursors, including a few special ones for when you're busy. Yep, that's not one you can use all the time, is it? This would have been enough for most developers, but not these guys. We've also got a bunch of previews, which include screenshots from balls. Or what's most likely balls of steel and shows off two of the different tables not only that but we've also got various screenshots from blood I live again also included is a bunch of screenshots from a game called Stargun which is not going to win any awards for originality Though, looking at the various screenshots, I don't think the gameplay is going to win any awards either, as it looks like a pretty standard side-scrolling shoot-em-up. And finally, we have SW, or Shadow Warrior. Yep, they like to show off all the various build engine games on the CD. Want some wang? And with plenty more space to fill, they've also included the share folder, which has a bunch of demos for various games. With a nice little readme to tell you, you can't run them from the CD, instead you're going to have to copy it to your machine. And there's one last secret to be found on this CD, and we can get it by opening up a CD player. And that wraps up this round of extras. If you know of any that we've not covered so far, leave me a comment right here or find me on our Retro Computer Games Discord server. I'll leave a link in the description. And until next time, I've been the Goldfish. That was a very weird set of screensavers, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video to the end. I hope you had as much fun watching it as I had making it. And if you want to check out other videos I've done, you should find a couple of links on screen somewhere behind all the carnage. And a subscribe button.